to all our TV viewers from Herald, a warm welcome. We are continuing with our series, Health and Happiness. And the last episode, we talked about how to lead a healthier and longer life through early diagnosis, followed by appropriate clinical treatment. We talked about some of the diagnostic tests that uh, need to be carried out on a regular basis. And we had our expert, our own Goan, and she is none other than uh, Dr. Sushila Sequera E. Fonseca. Dr. Sushila, welcome once Thank again. You. Thank you. We talked about several diagnostic tests last uh, time and a uh, lot of good response that we have had and they said uh, you need to continue this uh, program. We talked about your total blood count, we talked about uh, uh, your HbA1c and all those tests and some tests were remaining. We talked also about vitamins and uh, vitamin D because after COVID, Everybody is talking about vitamin D deficiency. They say it's a hormone and things like that. They talk about also zinc. And I think the pharmaceutical companies have made a <laughs> roaring business with all these uh, vitamin tablets. So Dr. Sushila, over to you. Yeah, we could uh, continue with the vitamins because I didn't do vitamin. You see, we, the vitamins were called vitamin A, B, C, D. Now, uh, A, is important for the eyes. B is a big group. We call them the B complex. Uh, the B1, B2, B3, it goes on like that. But uh, uh, these vitamin B complex is important for the RBCs, for the blood cells to grow properly. It is important for the nerves. If a deficiency of B12 can cause uh, a neuritis, it means irritation of the nerves. Uh, and uh, also, it is important, we are not really so aware of it, that it is important for the breakdown of proteins and for their, what we call the metabolism, for their turnover, for, for getting rid of the waste products of the protein. And uh, in fact, I personally feel we should do it more in the cardiac patients because uh, low B12 would indicate that there is a tendency for hardening of the blood vessels, which would lead to cardiac problems. Just now, there isn't so much awareness of it, but it is important to be aware that you should have enough B complex. Uh, if I may interrupt you, a uh, lot of uh, vegans who are totally veg, they uh, say that how do we get vitamin B12? And it is essential, and your body does not produce it. B12 is practically in all the green leafy vegetables, you will get B12. So I'm surprised the vegans don't know. The fruits and vegetables are rich in, B12, in, in all the B, uh, vitamin Bs. And uh, what may not be found in fruits and vegetables are the ones, you see the, it is this way, you have the water soluble vitamins and the non water soluble or the fat soluble vitamins. Now B, vitamin B is a water soluble vitamin. So you'll find it in a lot of the vegetables and a lot of the fruits. Whereas A, um, uh, vitamin K, vitamin A are fat soluble. Then you have what we were talking about, vitamin D. Now vitamin D is a vitamin which we know is important for the bones. It, it helps the calcium to, to be deposited properly in the bones. So deficiency of vitamin D is known to cause in children what we call rickets, means weak bones called rickets and in elderly people it will cause what we call osteoporosis, osteopenia, meaning the calcium is not properly deposited in the bones. But now in COVID we realized that vitamin D is important even for the full well-being of the body, for all the cells to develop properly to have immunity. So we now are focusing a lot on vitamin D. But the beauty is that here in Goa especially, we get vitamin D free if we go and sit in the sun between 7 and 9 o'clock. Those are the best hours for what happens is that the sun rays, the UVB radiation of the sun, uh, works on the, a certain substance in the skin of our body, which converts into vitamin D3, which is important. 
So, vitamin D should not be a pro uh, optimum levels of vitamin D should not be a problem really in states like Goa with so much sunlight. If we just took the trouble of going out and sitting in the sun, our main problem really comes because not only we do not sit in the sun, but we our um, cultural way is that we are fully clothed. So, we cover our body so much. So, the skin and, and does there not. are some people who use the uh, suntan cream, suntan yes. lotion. And also the darker skin people have more difficulty in absorbing the sun rays. The pigment in the skin is given to protect us from the bad. And, uh, I, and I do not think so in rays. India we have too many cases of skin cancer. No, why? Because we are colored. Yes. But the uh, off, off side of it is that we do not absorb enough sun. So, we have to make a special effort to get sun and especially between 7 and 9 a.m. because we get the UVB radiation at that time. So, that is for vitamin D. So, that is why it is called the sunshine vitamin. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely correct. Yeah. Okay. So, I think these are the main vitamins we can cover. Then we, um, I would like to really stress today on the thyroid. The thyroid is a gland which we have in the neck. It is a very small gland, but it produces hormones which we call in short form T3 and T4. These hormones regulate practically all the tissues of the body because they stimulate or they keep them active. And uh, we have seen that, uh, well, you can have children who are born with less thyroid. You have any age group it can be affected, but to me I find what is important are the middle aged women. It is seen very often that middle aged women, the thyroid does not work so well. So, suddenly you see a lady who was very active feeling lethargic, she is getting constipated, she is getting uh, memory loss and sometimes it is a simple thing as giving a little tablet which will replace the hormone that the thyroid is not producing. So, I feel it is very important that everyone over the age of 45 should do a test for the thyroid function. Especially women. Especially women because it is seen that it can happen in men, but it is very common in middle age and elderly women. So, I would advocate that every lady after the age of 45, even after 40, should do a test for thyroid function. Uh, is it uh, connected with the iodine? It, it, ca it can be because of the iodine, it just can be one does not know why, but the thyroid function decreases. There is a hormone from the brain which stimulates the thyroid to work. It may be that that connection is not working properly. So, I think empirically like you do a sugar and cholesterol, you should also do a thyroid function at least once in six months or once a year. So, that you know that you are working at optimum. Yes. Uh, and it is an easy thing to manage. Yeah. Uh, in the days gone by, I am talking maybe about uh, 30 or 40 years, we never heard about this thyroid problem. Yeah, you are right. Because 40 years back, it was difficult to get a thyroid test done. Yes. But now it has become very simple. And it is very easily done, very accessible to do it, and very easy to treat. So, I do not see why we do not so encourage. So, in, in your laboratory that you have. Yes, we uh, do. You, we you do, do the thyroid do the, test yes. and also I would and all the physicians are aware about the medication for a normal thyroid. Uh, what uh, somebody who saw your interview the last time, he commented and he said, when we buy a car, we are told you have to do servicing after so many and then a reminder is sent. Why is something like this is not done <laughs> for all absolutely, of us? Absolutely, absolutely. This would, this is really the idea that at least once a year. I would say every six months, but at least once a year you should do a, a, and, and, a blood And he checkup. told me, he says, for the car, we are so particular. Absolutely. Where you know that you can get a replacement for the parts which are not there, but it is not in our human body. We don't get but a replacement But he says the easily. thinking of the human mind is totally. Yes, very, very true. Hit the nail on the head. This is the right thing. We should do a test regularly, and especially once you know. You see, if you once you know what is your weakness, then you can concentrate on improving that. But if you don't know, you're not aware, and then suddenly you're caught when it is very bad. That is very difficult for the and, junior and physician to manage. And he emphasized especially on diabetes. 
This uh, has, uh, is becoming a, a world problem. Yes. It's become a problem Very in common. India. In Goa, he tells me, you don't know how many people are suffering from this. Very uh, true. Very and true. he says, only if they had to listen to what uh, Dr. Sushila said, <laughs> It says at least uh, to some extent the number would have no, come down. No, it is it is very important because once you are conscious of what is your illness or your weakness or your or the bad uh, point in your in your system, then you know that you or you work towards it. But if you are unaware, you will not work towards it till it catches you unaware. Yes. So it is most important that you should do a test. I feel after the age of forty-five, you should do it every six months. The thyroid. The, Yes. You should do well, you should, certain parameters, yes. your sugar, your cholesterol, lipid profile, the thyroid. Um, there is another test that I will tell you for the men, the thyroid and uh, one for the liver, one for the kidneys to see that your body is functioning optimally. Now the next one I want to talk about is the PSA or the prostate specific antigen. Like I said, the middle aged lady gets affected. The men also after a certain age, after 50 or 45, 50, they start having this gland of theirs, the th prostate. Many of the men, it, it uh, troubles them. What is this gland? This gland is a little nut shaped, uh, they call it chestnut shaped gland. Around the, the bladder, at the base of the bladder, going into the urethra or the penis. When that gland grows, and it tends to grow after middle age in many men. It tends to prevent the urine passing. So that is one problem. So the flow is The flow affected. is affected. That is one problem. And that flow being affected leads to urine infections, constant urine infections. It can lead to back pressure to the kidneys and affect the kidneys. But besides that, that we have to know if that growth is a benign one or it is a malignant one. So it is most important to do this test called prostate specific antigen. It is just a blood prick it test. It is a blood test. This prostate specific antigen is a substance which is found normally in the prostate. But when there is this enlargement, it may not increase. But when there is a cancer, it tends to increase, meaning it finds its way into the bloodstream. That can also be increased when there is inflammation of the prostate. Or some, but we, it is a signal. Yes, there is something wrong. We have to look at it again. So you suggested at 45 and then 50 and yes. then periodically? Yes. Periodically, once a year, you do the uh, PSA to see, yeah, is it okay? Is it not okay? Do I have to look at it again? Do I have to go to my doctor again? Do, do we have to do an ultrasound to see what is happening? Do they have to do any intervention? So it gives you an idea, yeah, if it is okay, everything is okay or not okay. It is not 100%. You can get cancers without the PSA being increased. But if it is increased, yeah, it is an alarm bell that rings. So this is what I want to say that people are not aware enough of, of this. They are not this. even aware of what is prostate. Yes, that is the thing. Uh, and normally when the urination is affected, or sometimes they say also that uh, blood uh, yes. passes to the yes. urine, and when you urinate in drops, that is the time, I think, uh, some indication. Yeah, then they go to the doctor saying, but we can you can look after it much earlier. Much earlier. Much look earlier, out for yeah. it much earlier. That is the biggest advantage of this diagnostic yeah, test. Of these tests, yes, very true. And earlier, like you say, 40 years ago, no one was looking at it. No one was aware. Or if you were aware, you had to send your samples to Bombay here and there. Now we are doing it right here in, yes. in Panchen. So PSA is another. PSA we is talked about thyroid and now PSA. PSA. Yes. These two are important, yes. I feel. Yeah. Um, then uh, we can, uh, then I want to talk about uh, cytology. Cytology is uh, pap smears for women. Pap smear is a smear which is collected from the exposed part or from the cervix and vagina. It can be done by a pathologist, it can be done by a gynecologist, even a trained nurse can do it in some places. And it is just taking a swab stick and rubbing the cervix, the cervix and those cells fall off onto the swab which are applied to a smear. The smear is then stained in the lab and then we look to see, are those cells totally normal? Then we classify, yeah, they're totally normal. Or yeah, there's a little bit of infection there and there the cells of the cervix are a little bit, um, uh, they show a little bit of unrest, meaning they're not typically at rest, they're not typically okay. Then we say, no, no, this is, 
this is more than not uh, than unrest this is uh, not good at all look at it again so automatically the the woman is screened for cervical cancer she knows there is infection not infection she goes to her gynecologist who treats and then who follows up so like this we can avoid a lot of heartbreak and, a and lot I of believe problems. there is uh, uh, the number of such cases is increasing yeah the cancers are increasing maybe, maybe the uh, yeah now we find it more uh, uh, definitely it is increasing there is more awareness of cancer of the cervix but uh, I would like to also to for the women to know that yes we can do this test after the age of 35 you definitely should do it once a year and then once in six months till around the age of 65 many doctors say after 65 it is okay but maybe once a year after till 75 or so you should do it or when you have a complaint a discharge or a, a non definitely blood but even a little bit of mucus yes you want to check it out but uh, it def I, I would like to tell you all that abroad they do it even earlier before the age of 35. In some countries it is compulsory. It is compulsory and they have to report otherwise they get an intimation asking them why they have not come for, for their test. Is it? Yes, yes. It is, it is a very well organized thing in some countries. So I don't see why our people should not be aware and should not take care of themselves because you avoid a lot of pain afterwards. If you know, yeah, there is a problem, it has to be treated, it has to be cauterized or, or conized, they say it, the a piece of the cervix is taken out or the whole uterus is taken out. So it depends on, on the uh, stage that you get it, the uh, doctor who is treating you and your history, personal history or family history, all is put together and a decision is taken on the treatment. So uh, uh, very often sometimes biopsies are also done to detect uh, some... Yeah. Then like this, when there is a, when there is a doubt, okay, the uh, physician, the gynecologist may decide he will take a biopsy or she will take a biopsy to confirm or to, uh, as a part of the treatment cauterization, they may take out a biopsy or they take out the biopsy to uh, confirm, yes, there is no problem or there is a problem or that the management has to be more aggressive. Like you talked about pap smear, in some countries I was told that mammogram also is mandatory. Yes, yes. Uh, mammogram, yes, after a certain age you have to do breast, a mammogram. Breast cancer, breast cancer is also on the rise. It can also be detected. Like that also there are t blood tests for cancers, for the for breast cancer, there's what we call CA 15.6. There is for the pancreas, CA is 19.9. Uh, there is for the ovary CA 125, but these are all giving you an idea. They are not always 100%, but in medicine it is like that. You do many investigations like a jigsaw puzzle, put them together and get the picture that that uh, gives you the diagnosis. But there are tests the that, uh, there are tests, that there are could blood be tests, indicative. There are blood tests, there are like you say mammography. There is what we do, um, a fine needle aspirate. If there is a lump anywhere, um, it may be usually it's a superficial lump but maybe anywhere in the body you put in a fine needle and aspirate to see what you get that is put on a slide and we as pathologists examine the slide and give an opinion this is benign this may be malignant this is malignant it it, it gives the no, normally doctor. people neglect all this and yeah. when it is at advanced, uh, that is the tragedy say, of stage life. three or four, when, the, when you are closer to death. When the doctor cannot do, when the surgeon or the gynecologist cannot do much about it, then they come, which is so a sad this, thing. So this could be somewhat a preventive aspect. Definitely. I definitely feel that you should always take a, a medical opinion when you have something unusual. You get a lump, which is not painful, but it, is, it wasn't there before. You should, you should look out for it and find out why it is there. And uh, nowadays, like I said, you just put a fine needle inside, remove a little of whatever comes in, put on a slide, and the doctor and the pathologist can tell you, yeah, this is something serious but or something serious. Why do you serious. think most people avoid doing this test? There are two types of people: those okay. who never believe that they can be, that they can have a problem, and the others who wish, wish it away. They hope it will just disappear. So, so they just don't look and especially when it's painless okay but the painless ones are the ones that are more uh, dangerous yeah 
and also of late there have been cases of fatty liver now yeah. and they talk about yes. non alcoholic fatty yes. liver yes that and, is and and it is i believe diagnosed at very advanced stage that, 3 that 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 is that is our main problem in go especially very common yes and the main problem is like this that it is presumed I I want to tell you all this because I've uh, I I was in Bombay and it was presumed that every goan is alcoholic, so every fatty liver is presumed to be because of alcohol. But now, fortunately, in the last few years, physicians have realized that fatty livers must be reported and must be looked at seriously, because fatty livers, if they continue, they uh, can go into fibrosis and cirrhosis and, and then there is, is no that. coming back and yeah and then there is that. no coming back yes. then you you you're dying but of but if you diagnose disorder. it at the stage at 1 the stage or one. maybe 2 also yes when you s diagnose it early you can regress it can re revert you can go back and and get your liver normal but uh, what i want to emphasize also it is very common in goans yeah that's I, what I, i was about to say that many goans now yeah. have been diagnosed with a non alcoholic fatty liver fatty disease liver disease and i personally suspect that we may be having uh, i don't know for, uh, a genetic uh, uh, yes. this thing tendency to it uh, towards it because or it may be our diet they say yeah. normally it is excessive uh, sugar that we are uh, Excess, consuming excessive any food which is converted into fat which is deposited in the, in liver. the liver but it may be that the liver cells have some abnormality which cannot cope with this process so which your, is normal your, to your, other your, people so your your liver normal functioning test will also will show will give you an idea an indication. in an indication something is not okay yes. with the liver that's yes. why i say do at least one liver test once a year yes. once in 6 months yes. and one kidney test and also pancreatic cancer i believe in goa yeah. is on the rise yeah that that, that is surprising that that uh, uh, it is on the rise or, or we are getting more conscious about about it happening yes yes yeah yes. so uh, like i said all these can also be diagnosed to a certain extent with blood tests yes yeah uh, but uh, like your five for ca pancreatic cancer there's a ca 19.9 again they are not full proof but they give you an indication yeah this this problem may be there or you have been running a full fledged laboratory now yeah. which is uh, one of the most renowned <laughs> laboratories that <laughs> we you. have uh, and uh, what did you find now common problems uh, if at all if you have come across um, well there is definitely a change people used to avoid going to do their blood tests because uh, they f used to feel ashamed or they felt that yeah i do a test only because i'm sick now there are people but not most of the population but there is a there is a sizable population which is aware that they have to do their tests regularly um i think i think what has helped is yeah the people who like we said last time where the companies ask them to do their tests yes private now for your so all seamen yes all seamen it is mandatory if you don't do this test and you your results are not good yeah you cannot join okay. the ship so there is a certain awareness but still it is not enough it, now people come when they are old because the doc their physician has sent them but very few people come of their own uh, 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 you know from their own reasoning that yeah i need to check and see what is happening to my body uh, everyone feels fit and fine yes. and uh, many people think that the stouter they are the stronger they are and the like they used to say if you got a pot belly yes. you, you are a wealthy person yes yeah. exactly that, that is that could be exactly the opposite yes exactly yes. and those people would have more of that fatty liver yes <laughs> and and do you think uh, that goans are inclined for more sugar i was told that uh, certain dishes from salset taste better than the dishes from uh, bardes or ilis and then somebody said do you know what is the reason this is salsed people add sugar actually that is that may be true because i also was surprised that many dishes always add sugar yes in our go so and the taste, go uh, and go it and enhances the yeah, taste yeah enhances the taste yes. i don't know if it's only in salsed but in in, in bardes also there is but maybe that uh, like you say more in salsed maybe it's a genetic thing with the people that side that they have yes. uh, and since you said genetic if people know that your father mother yes. had say diabetes 
even blood pressure and so many Any other disease. problems. Yeah. I yes. think these are the people who should more be more aware and more careful and and more proactive as far as their health is concerned. Yes. Uh, why this type of information is not given in our schools and colleges? Yeah, that is that is what uh, that is what I I also feel. There's a lot of things. And you have been be writing a lot of books. Yes, I have written. Uh, I don't know how I many books written. you have uh, written. I've got ten, but uh, about four or five of them are actually on health. The others are novels to try and demonstrate how uh, you know. Like what AIDS, what HIV. made you to go into writing? Uh, well, I started. I started first with a novel which dealt really with alcoholism because uh, this was in, in the late 90s because alcoholism that time was really, uh, it is still there but not like how it was at that time, that, uh, that time it was all over the streets. And I just wanted to show how alcoholism uh, destroys a family and it was written really for the school going children. Uh, then uh, came uh, HIV came on the scene. And uh, that also, uh, as a pathologist, as a doctor, I saw people who got it in, in very silly ways. Um, and uh, there again, I wrote this novel, again to show how, you know, in a foolish manner, some young boys got it. And uh, how it really was a drain on the family and, and destroys the family. Uh, then, uh, at the same time also, I wrote a factual, this thing about ha how HIV is spread. Uh, these two, then I forget. One was not really on medicine. One was to show the equality of, the hu of, of humans, of, of people. Um, and uh, like that I have done here and then. I've written many articles also on like how the vectors uh, spread uh, disease and what we should do when the monsoons come, how we should. Uh, I have been very interested in, in spreading the word. Yes. But um, Because if this is spread right uh, uh, at the youth level. In the schools. In the schools, schools, colleges. Uh, yes, schools yes. and colleges. I feel it is very important that they should talk about it. You see, our society used to hide. They used to feel that being sick was a shame. Yes. So they used to hide these diseases. But I feel it is more important to talk about it, to accept that it exists, and to teach how to avoid and it. And also I would say, correct me if I'm yeah. wrong, when people get married, yes. they should also be <laughs> advised also on this aspect uh, because maybe, procreation maybe, is there with them. Maybe, maybe they should, but uh, uh, maybe that would be touching on a very delicate, <laughs> this thing because then it depends on the faith, on the, the, but then, the but, but then health but, is. But uh, I think if you're educated in school, Yes. Then this issue will not come at, at marriage time. Yes. Because already the girl and the boy are no, aware of Just a reminder, their, because we forget uh, sometimes. Because maybe. there's no reminder like this automobiles. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they said, uh, 5,000 is over, you please you do have it. To Yesterday check. I got it for my PUC test. And quickly I yeah. ran today morning, <laughs> I did the PUC test because I was reminded. Yes. Maybe I would have had forgotten. Yes, maybe, maybe we should have a system, governmental system, that at this age you do these tests so that everyone reports at, at a certain age and so automatically uh, you, you know even when you get married you know I'm diabetic I'm, or I'm not diabetic but I have a tendency I have to take care, something like that and then you can introduce the thing of telling the bride and the bride telling the groom that uh, they are. They are <laughs> so we are coming <laughs> to a uh, close of this uh, beautiful uh, program <laughs> that you have been able to share with us. What is your final message uh, for enhancing the health of the people all over? Uh, awareness. Awareness is the most important thing. I would encourage uh, the teachers to talk about it in school, to introduce these topics in school, uh, again to discuss in colleges, because really to have a healthy society one has to be proactive. One has to test before you get sick rather than You know, get after. the problem and yeah, then want yeah, to find yeah, a solution. Yeah. And one more thing I forgot to mention was colorectal cancers also are on the rise. Yes. And for that we have to examine the stool and look for blood in the stool. It doesn't always appear as blood, but it appears we do occult, a test, occult blood. Yes. We test for the blood. 
That is one of the first ways. It of is on the rise out. in Goa, I was told. Yes, yes, definitely. And uh, awareness is the key to everything because if you are aware and you have to be method uh, systematic. So, maybe we should have some reminder at the age of 20, of 25, at 30, 35 and onwards that have you done your tests for these things. It would be improve our society and maybe in the end society would spend less for, uh, for, for uh, health. And, and less tragedies, no? So, less tragedies, less So, we cry, less we cry for later health. on yes. uh, when there is no yes. way out. Very true. Even for health, the government would spend less if they be all were systematic about our uh, yes. tests. Thank you, Dr. Sushila, for My being privilege. with us. My I know that you have to close your uh, no, uh, laboratory that, that for two days, <laughs> quite early, but uh, you have joined us as part of your social uh, program that uh, you are indulging. Thank you very much. We wish you all the best, Dr. Thank Sushila. Thank you.